Cool. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the JS Core Dev Weekly Sync. It's November the 19th, 2018. Uh, it's nice to see your faces. How are we all doing? Yes. <laughs> Rad. Uh, good. Um, cool. Please put your name onto the list of attendees. Um, Jacob has volunteered to be note taker. Thank you already. Um, what should we do? Let's do what we always do. Uh, and do a round of updates of what you've done, what you've done this week, and what you're blocked on, and what you're going to do next week. Uh, let us start with Jacob. Would you like to give us your update? Yeah. So last week on Friday, we released libp 2 p 24 uh, That includes our custom content peer routing support, including delegated routing. Um, with PDP switch over as a state machine uh, that also exposes a new uh, dial FSM method. Um, so you can get a connection state machines for better control of individual connections. Um, we also have stability and error handling improvements for that. There was an issue with circuit relay um, where circuit relay wasn't listening last. So it caused the addresses to be wrong, particularly if you were using um, a TCP wildcard. Uh, IP address, it wouldn't, the peer-to-peer -peer circuit wouldn't bind to your, your auto addresses. So that's fixed now, so we should see better uh, improvements um, once everything's upgraded to that. Also submitted a PR to uh, JSIPFS so we can get that into the next release. Um, also fixed some issues with Switch, which is in the libp2p release, um, and then some multiplexer support fixes as well. Uh, I also started the JS Lib P2P daemon and we'll continue that this week and I am out Thursday and Friday. Does anybody have questions? Cool, thank you, Jacob. Let's move on to Volker. So, um I found a bug about slow transfer speed that I've already discovered like half a year ago, but now as we spend some time on performance work, I thought I found a bug about it. Um, and then, yeah, finally, um, the IPLD team has a B-weekly meeting and a um, management um, repository, so you can check it out. It contains all the the, the OKRs, like it's the same as for IPFS, but for IPLD. So we finally basically spawn out being our own our own organization. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, I looked into the um, IPLD APIs because we want to do change the APIs a bit in this quarter or at least do a review of it. And especially in the context of graph sync because uh, I'd like to find out like if we would have graph sync already, what would the IPAs, APIs be like? And then we can just uh, yeah, um, update everything in, in sync, basically, to make everything great. And then I also found out during the BWT meeting that on Zoom, the gallery view doesn't work in the live stream if you are on Linux. This was about an one hour chat with the Zoom support to that they <laughs> can confirm that it's a bug. So yeah, we'll see how this works out. And I'm not blocking anything and I will do further work on the IPD API and graphs and stuff. And yeah, and that's it. Any questions for Volker? Uh, just a quick one. Uh, so now with the new IPLD sync, uh, does it mean that IPLD team will focus on that sync up and like leave this one, or will you continue to be part of this one for the JS parts? Um, so I like as as so I so I expect that I at least will be part of both because yeah I need to sync with other people and so um, I don't see anything changing. So yeah, got it. Um, so I guess we'll just like see how it goes and see how much duplicated information there is. Probably not, not that much. Uh, one thing that you mentioned was um, you found a bug that was hitting performance, if I heard correctly. Uh, one thing that I saw on the dynamic data and capabilities working group update was that they found that the way that we smash index DB is kind of like 
problematic for performance reasons. Um, it just like drags down any kind of like um, operation or like when, when you are like doing a CRDT thing because it has so many writes that it kind of like bogs down the entire uh, application. And so one thing that I don't know if this like falls into the responsibility of IPLB people, JS, IP, or the IPFS people, or both. I think it's both. Um, one thing to look at is how interface out of the store works and, and what things we can think there uh, to make things faster, uh, like adding a caching layer or whatever. Um, so, something good to, to look at. But, but I, I just wanted to bring this to this group, <laughs> and given that you mentioned performance and I feel these storing objects. It's not a question. You could, we can continue. Cool. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, let shall we move on to Vashko? Hey yo. So last week uh, I fixed the review of Alan's regarding the routing refactor for IPNS and GSFFS. Then uh, Stephen. Uh, made the fix for the interop problem in PubSub. I did the same for the GS site, but I, need, I still need to test if uh, using both fixes, it solves our problem or not. Uh, then uh, I was also implementing the IPNS over the HT initial implementation. It's almost uh, ready for creating a, a WIP uh, PR because uh, uh, people from dynamic data want to start using it, so I'll create a PR hopefully today. Uh, then in the DHT test tests and uh, test bed for DHT, I, I had a talk with uh, John Yesse. I asked some feedback about uh, what should I read to understand what uh, should be good tests for the, these DHT stress tests and test bed. He recommended me some uh, papers, I already read them. And I also had a sync call with Jacob and Cole about the test pad. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to create tests, but I will look at it this week. Then uh, I also did lots of reviews for the lip 2 p release and uh, fixed today a bug in the pin CLI for GSFFS. So for this week, I went to fix uh, uh, some issues that David reported in the Service Worker Gateway and then uh, uh, continue the IPNS over the HTPR, test the uh, IPNS over PubSub interrupt with the fixes that uh, we made, and continue also the work in the test tests for the DHT. Any questions for me? Okay, if there's no questions, let's move on to, let's move on to me. Um, hi. Uh, uh, cool. So, um, Files API is being refactored a little, little bit to move the uh, to move the well, basically move the Files API to the root of the uh, of the namespace. So you just do ipfs dot add, ipfs dot get, ipfs dot cat, rather than uh, ipfs dot files dot add. Seeing as it is ipfs with files and stuff, we privilege the file. Um, we're we're going to be privileging the file method. So there's there's a refactor for this, um, and we're moving the regular files stuff to the root first, and that will be eventually followed by the um, MFS stuff. Um, so there was a, uh, a PR for that in Interface IPFS Core, which um, I looked at, changed, fixed up, and merged, and I did the same thing for JS IPFS API. Um, I also reviewed and merged uh, Alex's uh, changes for IPLD DAG PB. So DAG nodes or um, protobuf DAG nodes no longer have a multi-hash property or a CID property. Um, so that was a PR in interface IBFS core merged and, and released and the same for JS IBFS API. The next step for that is the, the kind of fallout from that is that the object API is um, a whole bunch less useful because it, it essentially just t returns you back the data you gave it in because nothing has a CID anymore. So um, what the next step of that is, is to make a breaking change to the object API to return CIDs instead of, um, instead of DAG nodes. Um, and then you can get your node if you want to get your data back again, but um, it's more useful to know the CID. Uh, and then, well, you should really be using the DAG API anyway, but um, 
that this is an interim thing and it's um it, the the idea with this change is that um it will make reads of um of these particular types of nodes um, a whole lot faster because we don't have to actually do the hashing of the uh, of the data when we read it out of the data store again so that's all good um so anyway, that is reviewed and merged. Um, then, okay, so these two things um, are kind of uh, fighting each other a little bit. <laughs> um, so the files API refactor and the those uh, IPB changes, I had two requests, pull requests open, but they are sort of affecting, they are because of dependencies. Um, they, they, I've kind of merged them into one mega pull request and we can and that's currently running through ci right now but um i think we can get that merged merged pretty soon for js ipfs so uh, okay so then what else was i doing i was so i was working on the ci cid base pr still um i've added all of the http api tests that i wanted to add um i just need to add um core uh, core interface tests which there are fewer of to do but that shouldn't take long now um I reviewed Vashko's uh, IPNS routing logic refactor, so that's pulling out the routing logic uh, to from from the IPNS module, um, so that you can use different uh, methods of uh, uh, doing IPNS resolves. So I, either by PubSub or by DHT. Um, and um, what's that say? Re-enabled. Right. So last week I told you about the lazy lo the IPLD formats that um, that were now you're now able to lazy load them and um this was just finishing off that work by re-enabling it in js ipfs um i've created the issue for the 034 release because there's now a lot of, lot of things that are breaking that are going to go in it um and planned um and uh, i also spent an hour nearly two hours with uh with porsche doing some uh pair programming and uh, it was it was rad fun and um you should all do it with each other i recommend it <laughs> um Cool. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of blocked on um, the the object API breaking change that I, I mentioned returning CIDs. Like at the moment, we've got um, a version um, like we've got JS IPFS API which will return a DAG node without a CID, and I'd rather not do a breaking change release with that in it and then do another one immediately after, which changes the CID. It changes it to return CIDs. So I. Uh, I'm sort of soft blocked on uh, on being able to release JS IPFS API um, with like without um, uh, basically I can't I, I don't wouldn't don't want to do two breaking releases to change the same API um, so uh, I'd rather not do that. Uh, next week uh, I need to add in the add from URL so in with with the files API refactor that I mentioned there are a few API methods from uh, that are it, they used to be in the utils uh, object of JS IPFS API uh, that have been moved up to the root namespace and they are add from uh, a stream add from FS a file system and add from a URL um, and they have become part of the um, interface IPFS core so they need to be implemented in JS IPFS as well so um, I'm probably going to take much of the code that's already in JS IPFS API, um, port it over, um, and then finish off my CID base option PR by adding the core uh, interface tests for that. Um, and if I have time, I would like to write some interrupt tests to, um, to continue that work and allow us to put with a, a particular CID version and get it back from our repo using a different version of the CID. Um, so that's me. Any questions? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I, I just have a, a recommendation. Probably you are better off like checking the JSP FS CLI uh, code for um, like add from FS than uh, the one in JSP FS API, so the client library, because the client library is kind of like transforming all the files into a multi part stream which is not what you want. Uh, what you want is just like grab all the files and, and create the, the, the stream that Jens IPFS core expects. Um, but yeah, that, that's a long update with a lot of exciting things. Um, seems that uh, if things align, we might see another release by like end of the month, early December, something like that with all these features yeah. to make 
all the things faster. That's yes. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All right. I see blank faces. This is good. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, Hugo. Hi, guys. So last week I was able to finish the work on, on the IPF CTL. Um, basically, now all the three implementations are normalized and behave the same. It should be much, much easier to work with. Uh, also, uh, did some work about the dependencies on IPFS. Um, was the, we had some problems about having uh, the WebRTC stuff in and out and being peer dependencies or optional dependencies, and Jenkins failing to build stuff with those. But uh, hopefully that will be figured out. Um, uh, fixed uh, a problem with. Um, IPFS not working on nodes um, on the latest version. Uh, that basically was about uh, locking the repo. Um, the pull request is already on IPFS repo, should be ready to merge, uh, as it already was reviewed by Jacob at least. So I just need to bundle it up to IPFS and it should uh, start working again on, on the recent, most recent version. Also, have a work in progress um, pull requests about uh, reducing the bundle size on CTL. Still need the, the other one, the first one, the 308, to be merged to finish this one. Um, uh, also, did um, a pull request adding the renovate. Uh, I don't know if anyone, anyone knows about it. I already talked here about it. It's like Greenkeeper, but with filters. I have uh, the pull requests only with uh, um, like one pattern, so we can start small and uh, test if it works like we expect uh, to work. Uh, but I need to someone with the permissions to activate the Renovate service on the IPFS repo, so we can test it. Um, I also updated the GitLab CI config and added some docs um, according to the feedback Alan gave uh, about it. Um, oh yeah, and also started working on a sync iterators and uh, the damp like slave, just like uh, at the beginning of it, doing some research, making sure I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm blocked on the, yeah, on the init config on CTL, this is basically the JS part is done, but we need to like uh, go to the Go team to like implement the same uh, argument on their CLI, uh, or we probably just can decide to implement it only on our way and have a issue open so we can follow it up with the Go team. I don't know uh, if that's an option. Uh, but it might take a while to get the Go team to spend some time implementing this on their side. Um, also, the Circle CI stuff is kind of, I don't know, uh, paused um, because uh, the Infra team is not giving any feedback on that stuff, not in their own PR, not uh, 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 to me because I'm waiting like three weeks for the machines to finish the, the GitLab prototype. So we can have like two versions, uh, Circle CI and GitLab, and everyone can just give feedback and choose which, which one is the best. So um, I uh, um, left a comment in both pull requests, so uh, making me available to anything they, they, they need to make this happen, because I think we all, agree that we need to uh, move away from Jenkins either to Circle CI or GitLab say or whatever. Just something that works and it improves our our uh, workflow. Uh, so that's about it. And this week uh, I want to follow up on the, the still pending pull requests, continue the async iterators work 
and the bundle size work, and also uh, scoring the midterm mid OKRs. Anyone has any questions? Um, I just have a technical point because, like, this is um, designed to be like a super quick, uh, fast update call. Uh, thank you so much like, for everyone that has like shared updates so far. Like, it, it's very useful to have like comprehensive updates, but like at some time, like the team is kind of like growing, and so we have to go through everyone's updates. Uh, one one thing I want to uh, give you confidence about is like rest assured that like if you put something on the block list we follow up like if you put something like if, if it's like getting CI or like getting the infrastructure team to like get back to you like whatever it is like uh, after like a synchronously like going through the notes like uh, I, at least like me and others go point by point and make sure that like you get the answers you need so you just like need to highlight so say like I'm blocked because three weeks have passed and I haven't received a response from this team that, that's like enough um, and, and so like Try to like for the people that like will uh, share the update after like try to compact as much as, much as possible. Share what you have done. Uh, share what is in progress. Share what you're blocked and share what you're uh, putting next. Um, and, and then we can like dig into the issues that you link to like learn more. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Cool. Shall we continue? Sorry, I'm guilty of that as well. I just can't stop talking. <laughs> Uh, anyone? Anyone more questions for Hugo? Quickly. Okay, rad. Uh, let's us uh, move on to Alex. Hello. Uh, so, lots of stuff. I'll try and not talk about all of it. Um, so, I split the Unix FS engine into import and exporter modules, which is really cool. Because uh, now they're, they're smaller, more focused. Um, I went to town on the exporter because it's a small, easy one. Uh, so using in memory IPLD and a test now, super fast. Corazon dependencies, you know, uh, added extra tests for sharding, which weren't there. Um, crazy. Anyway, so there. Uh, I just went through and tidied it all up. Did the same thing for a bunch of old MFS uh, issues. Um, yeah, so changed IPLD to return a CID when you use IPLD.get, and there's a path which is cool. Um, yeah, I've changed uh, the exporter to stop talking, Alex, stop talking. The interesting thing is uh, directory sharding. So I was, I've deployed the change to the um, IPLD to remove the IPLD DAG PB to remove the hashing stuff to NPM and IPFS. And it's great. It got really fast. Duh. Not fast. It got faster. Um, it was still slow. Uh, so I was thinking, well, why is it still slow? And then looking at the, um, all the CPU patterns in that kind of thing we're instantiating loads and loads of DAG nodes still and I thought why are we doing that uh, and it's probably because of directory sharding uh, and that it's not in MFS um, now David said a while ago make sure you enable directory sharding so I was like cool yeah no problem and pass the options into the the importer um, but MFS does a whole bunch of like custom DAG manipulations and none of that was sharding aware so I'm making that sharding aware as quickly as I possibly can um, so that's going to be me for the next couple of days. And it's going to like retrospectively shard directories that it encounters that are getting big. Um, so over time, these things should get faster as well. That's going to be me for the next couple of days. And hopefully then uh, we'll be able to use NPM and IPFS for everything. Any questions? Um, great update. Uh, I'll just uh, say that while you are at it, if you can like factor out the age AMT model, module uh, outside you will make michael very happy because then he can access to that module um and, and if you can even make it agnostic to use that pb or like the export like you will make that feel even, even more happy so just add that in mind sure it's on the on the to do list <laughs> any other quick questions for alex Okay, um, what have we got? So this is other Alex, the, your namespace has been overloaded. Uh, thank you for sharing your, uh, your update here. Would you like to talk us through it quickly? It broke up when you said the name, was it me? It's your name. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Brad. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, because there's Alex just went. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I uh, well first got another project a little bit, went through all the material. Um, I made a, 
uh, I started a document kind of describing what it is that we're uh, trying to do. I shared it and I'm not sure if that's the right way to share documents in IPFS. Just please tell me if there's a better other way. Um, it's a Google Doc now. Um, so uh, basically uh, working away with, uh, together with Ron on uh, getting uh, benchmarks to run uh, local in a kind of a developer type setup and also on a remote host um, to eliminate uh, pollution from uh, other processes. Uh, and right now I'm integrating some of the tests that Ron made, uh, kind of aligning the things that we did and um, uh, moving on from there. Any questions? No, uh, no questions. Um, it would be cool to catch up, I guess, um, at some point, maybe this week, and we can. Yeah, that was my kind of my list of things to schedule. So. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be that would be awesome, and then we, maybe you can take us through what 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 you've done, and that that would be rad. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so then, hang on. Uh, so next up, uh, Matteo, would you like to? Oh, more or less, like work together with both Alex and Ron on reviewing code and discussing that piece of architecture that uh, Alex has done. So mostly code reviews and reviewing things. Not much, uh, not much activity really. I plan to do more this week, though. Okay, cool. Uh, and then well, finally, finally, not finally, penultimately, uh, Ron. So we started working on the tests, writing the test for um, for the adding a file using Unix um, FS engine. Um, so I'm taking kind of like the performance that was currently out there. You guys, there was like a um, small file and large file. So I'm using the same files. Um, so doing them in a in, uh, in an empty repo to start with, and then also populating the repo and doing the same. The same ads against a small and large file, and then you know outputting the results for that. Um, also added the, the get, so reading from the local repo, um, the same files, um, and just outputting the test on that. Um, nothing blocked. Yeah, I'm just working with um, Alex on just the you know the the output schema, kind of kind of have an initial version now for it, but we'll probably have to change it a little bit this week. So I'll be working on hardening that. Um, and then also, uh, let's see, I wrote some stuff down, so let's see. Oh, so, okay, writing, yeah, writing the results to the output directory, um, and also uh, testing, we're gonna write tests against multiple peers this week, and also review the, the browser testing. And, yeah, and that's about it. Cool, sounds really exciting. Uh, any real quick questions, because we are over time already. I just have one quick question on he was um, Alex, yeah first Alex was talking about the changes to to importer and exporter um, on the Unix FS um, is when you guys talk about it, is that like how far away is it like what branch is it going to master when it's done or is it in I guess when do I see those changes when I you know if I'm going to pull something uh, there's the changes being done well there are changes in master right now. Um, right, we'll be able to fix. Right, so. Yeah, so there'll be a new release. Oh, it's not until to, um, oh, hmm. you're breaking up. Who's breaking up? It might be me. Uh, okay, so yeah, there's going to be another release fairly soonish, but I would I'd expect it to be at the end of the month, um, maybe a little bit into December, um, and that sh that will probably have most of the stuff that Alex is talking about now. Thanks. Cool. Um, all right, cool. Uh, we are over time. So we've got an update from Travis, but I don't see him here. I guess he's... Okay, cool. So uh, read that in your own time. Um, uh, one final thing to say is if you haven't done, already done your OKR scoring for the mid-quarter, then please do that. Um, thank you all for joining us uh, and um, it's been uh, really nice to have uh, to have the Neoform guys also join and put their updates here as well. Um, that was a really nice surprise. So thank you. Um,
uh, and let's we'll uh, offline schedule a, a call. Um, cool. Thank you very much, everybody, and um, uh, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.